For 38 years, Korea had been ruled by the Japanese Empire since 1910. With the defeat of Japan in World War II, Korea was split by the Allied forces. The Soviet Union took north while the United States took south, under a borderline that splits two regions known as the 38th Parallel. But this joint commission between the US and the Soviets didn't sit well for the Koreans. Violent riots broke out, leading to thousands of Koreans executed. Revolutionary groups who were eager to establish a provisional government were banned by the US, preventing the spread of communism in the South. This prompted the US government to hold elections for both sides. The South elected Syng Man Rae as their president on July 17, 1948, establishing democracy in the South. And on August 25th, the Soviets set up a communist government under Kim Il-sung in the North. Kim Il-sung had been eyeing for a military invasion of their southern brethren for years now. But with the victory of Mao Zedong's Communist Party in the Chinese Civil War and the withdrawal of U.S. and U.S.S.R. out of Korea in 1948 and 49, Kim's ambitions of a communist unified Korea is imminent and persuaded Soviet leader Joseph Stalin to support his invasion. In April of 1950, Stalin accepted Kim's proposal but with limited backing from the Hammer and Sickle Reds due to confrontations with the United States. The communists also believed that America might get involved, forcing Stalin to provide weapons and artillery support to the North and administer them Soviet advisors, while China would aid up North Koreans with reinforcements if needed. Despite the South Korean government acknowledged the potential invasion of the North is unlikely, but that unlikely mistake might regret their decision. On June 25, 1950, the North Korean army crossed the 38th parallel and attacked the South Koreans by surprise. With the lack of artillery and only having 95,000 men, the South Korean army were decimated by the North, resulting of a full southwards retreat. Ray fled Seoul on the 27th, and on the 28th of June, the NKA captured the city. The United Nations, who were just formed right after World War II, condemned North Korea's invasion and gathered all of the UN Security Council members to discuss and debate whether they will intervene or stay out of Korea. The Soviet Union, who was a veto power in the Security Council, boycotted the meetings due to China not having a seat in the council. After disputing the matter, the UN Security Council concluded to intervene on behalf of South Korea, thus aiding them with military assistance by passing Resolution 83 and is headed by the United States, which they will provide the SKA with land, air, and sea cover. On July 5th, the US Army arrived in Korea, but due to expensive defense cuts, the Americans were poorly equipped and were defeated by the NKA at the Battle of Osan. Alongside with the badly beaten South Korean forces, both armies were driven farther south till they hauled and create a perimeter defense line around the port city of Busan. Striving to drive the communists away from Busan, UN Commander Douglas MacArthur initiates a successful amphibious landings at Incheon on the 15th of September, relieving UN and American troops to break out of the Busan perimeter and started to push the North Koreans northwards towards Seoul, ultimately liberated the country on September 25th. China, who was backing their fellow communist Koreans, was concerned about a possible capitalist invasion of North Korea, which prompted China to circulate warnings to the capitalists if they cross the 38th parallel, China will intervene. MacArthur responded by invading North Korea after he was given permission by the UN to proceed the invasion. They took over numerous North Korean places including Pyongyang, leading the NKA to retreat comprehensively to the Chinese border. While the UN troops are fighting off the NKA at the Yalu River, the Chinese launched their first phase offensive on October 25th, surprisingly attacked the capitalists, pinning them down to the Chongchon River. Rather pushing the UN forces forward down back to the south, the Chinese strategically went back into their hideouts following the victory. The reason for this is because the Chinese were waiting for a UN counterattack, which the UN launched on November 24th. But the Chinese were able to suppress the attack and immediately began the advance towards south. Thanks to the Turkish brigade who defended the road junction of Kunuri, managed to slow down the Chinese advance for two days, buying some time for the UN to successfully fall back to the 38th parallel. Civilians and UN forces in Hongnam were evacuated. 
Kim Il-sung was relieved from his duties as commander since China is now the fighting force of the war. The Chinese has now the upper hand to strike the UN out of nowhere, and they already might have one. On January 1st, 1951, at the eve of the New Year, China initiated the Chinese New Year's Offensive. Using loud trumpets and gongs, the Chinese disoriented and crushed the UN forces, leading to the second fall of Seoul under communist hands on January 4th. These failures of the UN led to General MacArthur consider whether to drop nuclear weapons on China. He believed if America dropped nukes to the communists, they will be inadequate to supply the Chinese forces due to the radioactive fallout. While MacArthur is contemplating to drop nukes, the UN continuously retreated from the Chinese. The Sino army were pushing the UN troops so fast, their suppliers cannot even catch up with them, causing food and ammo shortages. Therefore, the Chinese cannot advance at a greater distance. As a result, General Matthew Ridgway opened Operation Roundup on February 5th. The UN fought back the Chinese reaching the Han River, reoccupied Wuju, and with the combined force of French, American, and South Korean troops, they sluggishly broke off a Chinese attack in Chip Yongni. This was followed up with Operation Killer, with the intent to kill as many communists as much as possible, concluded with the fall of Hong Xiu on the 7th of March, and seven days later, they diminished the Chinese troops out of Seoul with Operation Ripper, ending the countless occupation of the capital city. Despite MacArthur's idea to drop nukes on the communists and wanted to escalate the war into China, President Harry Truman was pessimistic of his idea and on April 11th, MacArthur was removed from his position and was replaced by General Ridgway. In his first command, General Ridgway dropped the 187th Airborne Infantry Regiment to encircle the Chinese to prevent them to move northwards. Thus, the Sino army carried a counterattack as a last-ditch effort against UN forces, but were impotent to break the UN defense and were subsequently beaten both at the Battle of Cape Yong and the Battle of Imjin River in late April. To top it all off, the final UN assault moved the communists back to the 38th parallel. Throughout 1952 and 53, the fighting relegated into a stalemate and there weren't no exchanges of territories between both sides. Regardless of the fighting, Indian General Condendera Sumbaya Tamaya proposed an armistice to end the hostilities and to settle their differences, which both sides agreed and a ceasefire was signed on July 27, 1953. The acceptance of the armistice abided both sides to establish the Korean Demilitarized Zone, which stretches the northeast of the 38th parallel, acting as a buffer zone between North and South Korea. To this day, it's still the most heavily patrolled border in the world. The outcomes of the Korean War escalated the Cold War tensions between the US and the Soviet Union. It also started the slew of proxy war strategies between the two superpowers, which was featured in the Vietnam War, the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, and abundant of wars in the Middle East. Further to this, it also demonstrated the United Nations as a powerful organization to keep world peace intact. Thank you guys for watching this video and if you like it, be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications, and if you want to check um, the sources of this video, be sure to check the link in the description. And also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. And yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.